Hello, I'm Charling and this is Overfall. So what is Overfall, you might be asking? Well, it's an indie RPG with strategic turn-based combat with a unique story-driven event system developed by Para Games. And it's quite a unique game in both its presentation and gameplay. You are essentially trying to gather and unite all the different factions in the game, the Orcs, the Dwarves, the Elves, uh, the Hollow, uh, I believe there's another one as well. Um, in preparation for the Vaughn, who are basically invading the world through a portal. So you have a certain amount of time in order to level up your guys and build up enough reputation with everyone before the full-out invasion occurs. You can choose two characters at the start of the game, a warrior and a cleric with different abilities, weapons and artifacts and skills. And these abilities are based off the weapons that they're using. Now with each playthrough you can unlock additional four weapons, I think, I believe, for each of these classes as well as finding new trinkets and new skills for these characters which you can customize when you start the game. And on top of all of that you can also unlock new hero classes that you can play with in subsequent playthroughs. So as you unlock more of this stuff you'll be able to set up different builds and group combinations. Now all of these changes not only affect the strategies and tactics that you are going to employ in combat itself but will also provide you with various different responses to the numerous encounters that you find on each of the islands in the game. So there is a large amount of replayability to be found in Overfall. And if that wasn't enough, you can actually create your own story campaigns or download other player-made campaigns. Um, however, I do have to say that this feature is still in beta as of the making of this video. So the gameplay loop involves you sailing around on your ship, around the ocean, visiting each of the islands in the game. Uh, each island type is associated with a particular faction, for example the dwarves, the elves, the hollows, the orcs, you know, that kind of thing. And once you land on each island, you'll be presented with an event that will involve a faction. So you may have to help the dwarves get their booze back, or you have to defend some elves, or you'll have to help some goblins um, get over their dust addiction, that kind of thing. And these events can be played out in different ways depending on your responses. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the different hero classes or even the different members of your party are going to give you different responses to those specific scenarios, which will be indicated by a gold speech bubble. Now, not all of these events are combat based either. In some of the cases, there is combat involved, but in other cases, it can be voided. And in some cases, there is absolutely no combat at all. It's an entirely dialogue driven event. And at the conclusion of each of these events, depending on what you did, you'll be rewarded with food, which is used to heal your heroes, frags and dust, which are both a kind of currency that you use to purchase different things, and ruins, which are used to purchase special things. In some cases, you'll be awarded reputation, so you can either lose or gain reputation with that particular faction, again, depending on what the result of the event was, or you'll unlock new trinkets, new skills, uh, weapons, and companions and heroes for your next playthrough. So yeah, there's a fair amount of stuff to unlock. So you're going to find that as you play the game more, you're going to have more and more options in each playthrough. So for the most part, these events are scripted in that each subsequent playthrough, when you come across these same events and you've encountered them before, you are going to know what responses to pick to get the best results. Uh, obviously, depending on your party composition, if you have heroes that you didn't have before you may get different responses that you haven't seen before but for the most part they're going to play out the same way and there are certainly a fair amount of these events in fact i think after seven hours of playing i'm still seeing events that i've actually never seen before but all in all the events are actually pretty good uh, some of them are pretty well written some of them are pretty funny some of them are callbacks to games or movies and that kind of thing uh, not all of them obviously but the dialogue for the most part is, is relatively entertaining um, and i definitely quite enjoyed that so you'll basically be making your way around the world doing these events, leveling up your heroes, gaining reputation and preparing for the invasion of the Vaughn. And you can see at the bottom there's a bar, uh, the game pauses when you're not moving around in your ship but when you do move time passes um, and obviously as the bar gets through each segment more and more Vaughn are eventually going to start spawning on the map and more and more worlds are going to be raised. So the game's going to get harder and harder as you progress uh, further and further. So that, in a nutshell, is the gameplay loop that you are going to find in Overfall. Um, but combat is a large part of the game, so let's talk a little bit about that as well. Uh, the combat is turn-based and on a hex grid, so each character is going to be assigned a play order based on their speed and will proceed to play out the turn in that order. 
Each turn is divided into three parts. You've got the movement phase, the utility phase, and the attack phase. And this is really what makes the combat in Overfall a little bit different from some of the other turn-based games that I've played. It focuses a lot on the buffs and debuff system. This is a very important aspect of the combat flow here. And applying and removing debuffs is key to success. It forces you to consider the situation carefully, which debuff needs priority, which uh, character has to have debuffs removed, which debuffs should be applied to enemies, and which buffs should be applied, and so on and so forth. And so this process is actually quite enjoyable and adds another layer of strategy on top of where your guy's standing, or who you're fighting, or what abilities you actually have. So Overfall is somewhat of a roguelike in that if you lose all your heroes, it's game over and time to restart. There's no way to save your game. The game auto saves if you exit. So yeah, there's that. The game is pretty brutal at times. The AI plays well. It's going to stack the correct debuffs on your guys. It's going to buff its guys so that it can do the maximum amount of damage to your weakest party members. But yeah, the game is pretty tough. I've yet to succeed all the way through the end. It has been fun though, and there's enough incentive to play through multiple times. It's not overly frustrating when you die. And finally, there's a story creator where players are able to create their own story events and outcomes. And for those of you who are creative and enjoy making new adventures, I think this is going to take up some of your time as well. I think it's a nice feature, and with the ability to download player-created stories and events, I think this is going to add quite a lot of replay value to this particular title. However, the game is not without its issues. There are two that stand out, and the first one, being the bigger of the two, is the frame rate. The game runs at 60 frames a second, so it's not a 30 frames game or anything like that. But every time an enemy dies or certain effects play on the screen, the frame rate just starts to drop. And I'm not sure why this is happening. It's very annoying. This was happening when the game was in early access. And for some reason, even after the game has gone into full release, it is still present. So that is a little bit disappointing. I see from various posts on the forums, it's clear that the developers are aware of this issue. So hopefully it's going to get fixed in not too long. The other issue is connected to the sound. Some of the sound effects sound like they are just distorted. So it's as if they were recorded with the volume too high or were captured and there was just too much bass when they recorded or edited those particular sounds. It's really odd indeed and it's actually quite bad. Um, it's not with all the sounds. There are only specific sounds in combat when you cast specific effects that this happens. But it's a little disappointing to see that sounds of this quality find their way into a full release product. But again, outside of these things, there isn't really thing, anything else that stood out to me as annoying or broken. I didn't have any crashes or black screens or freezes or anything bad like that. Uh, for the most part, it's been a solid experience. All in all, Overfall is a very enjoyable game. The combat is tactical and engaging. The events are interesting and entertaining. And I think as a package, this game offers a fair amount of content for the price that you pay. And I do think it's definitely worth checking out. It's something unique. And if you enjoy turn-based tactical combat with some really, really interesting story aspects to it, that's definitely worth checking out. But otherwise, that's been a look at Overfall. You can pick the game up on Steam for $15.99, I believe, or your original equivalent. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope that it gave you a little bit more of an idea of what Overfall is about. If you enjoyed the video, uh, you can support the channel by subscribing, liking, or commenting. And if you have any questions or comments, you can leave them in the section below. That wraps it up. I've been Shaoling. Until next time.